Hello and welcome to September. Yeah, believe it or not, it's a brand new month here at Cord Cutting Today. September 4th, 2020 to be precise. And if you're new here, this is our weekly roundup of all the latest streaming and cord cutting news. Elsewhere on our channel, you'll get live Q&A sessions on Wednesdays and topical deep dives on Thursdays, like this week's look at the NVIDIA Shield TV Update 8.2. For today, however, we have a lot to talk about, including the NFL Network coming to YouTube TV, Netflix dabbling in some free preview content, Mulan's premiere this weekend and its eventual release on the standard Disney Plus lineup, and more. But first, of course, don't forget to click those almighty like and subscribe buttons down below. They really do help us out and enable us to bring you even more content in the future. And don't forget, we have a news website as well. It's called cordcuttersnews.com. And all the stories we're going to talk about today, well, they'll have links to them listed in the video description down below so you can find out more about each topic. And with that all established, let's, let's talk football, shall we? Earlier this week, we reported on rumors that YouTube TV would soon add the NFL Network alongside a new sports-focused add-on package. Well, on Thursday, YouTube TV made it official and announced that the live TV streaming service would indeed add the channel and what it's calling a Sports Plus package. So here are the details. NFL Network will be part of the base YouTube TV membership. Meanwhile, the new Sports Plus option includes NFL Red Zone, Fox College Sports, and all the channels you see here. As you can see, that new add-on runs for $10.99 per month on top of the $64.99 base price for YouTube TV. Now, if you've been following along with YouTube TV over the past few months, you might recall the service raised its price from $49.99 to the current $64.99 per month, and back then we asked whether the price hike had any of you reconsidering the service's value proposition. And now, with the addition of NFL Network to the standard lineup, it's once again time to ask that same question. Does bringing the channel on board change anything for you? Any football fans currently weighing the live TV streaming service options right now? Feel free to let us know in the comment section down below. In movie news, well, it's September 4th, so that means Mulan should be available on the Disney Plus streaming service via Premier Access for $29.99. Now, we've covered the film's rather lengthy journey toward an actual release, including several delays due to the COVID-19 outbreak and the massive theater closures. But the movie is finally, finally available to watch both online and via theaters that have recently reopened. And naturally, a lot of industry folks are keeping a close, close eye on the film's debut to see just how successful it'll be and whether or not premium pricing on top of regular subscription costs could be a viable option for future movie releases. But if you'd rather not pony up $30 right now, you won't have to wait too much longer for the movie to join the regular Disney Plus lineup. Mulan is set to be released on standard Disney Plus on December 4th, which is three months from well, today. And that time period more or less falls in line with some of the release windows we would see between traditional theater premieres and availability online. So, of course, I'm going to ask how many out there are eager to catch Disney's live-action Mulan right now, and how many are content to wait a little while longer until it's available as part of the regular Disney Plus lineup. Sound off in the comment section down below. In other Disney Plus news, the streaming service announced more details about Season 2 of its smash hit The Mandalorian. Now, we've been waiting for news on when we could expect that second season to drop, and this week, Disney shared that the show will return with new episodes starting just before Halloween, on Friday, October 30th. Now, just like with Season 1, Disney is opting for a more traditional TV show release schedule, so you can expect new episodes to drop on a weekly basis starting on that Friday, October 30th date. Unsurprisingly, Disney hasn't shared a whole lot of details about stories or specific plot points, but we do know of some notable guest stars lining up for Season 2. And that includes Tamora Morrison, who played Jango Fett in the Star Wars prequel era. And we'll let you know if and when we hear of more details on the show, but for now, is anyone out there looking forward to what's next for The Mandalorian? And what do you think of the weekly episode release schedule? Would you rather have them all at once so you can binge right through them? Let us know in the comment section down below. In other streaming service news, Netflix launched a new free section that doesn't require a login or account. The new free section includes some of Netflix's in-house content, like episodes of Stranger Things, original movies like Bird Box, and reality series like Love Island. According to Netflix's support page, you can get to the free section via computer browser or Android devices, but iOS devices aren't supported just yet. 
The company also says the selection of free movies and shows should change over time. Of course, the main motive here is most likely less about Netflix feeling charitable and more about attracting new subscribers that have perhaps been on the fence and want to sample what's available. So it'll be interesting to see how effective this new free section will be moving forward. For now, though, if you haven't signed up for Netflix, feel free to check out the free offerings and let us know if anything catches your eye. Speaking of TV shows, IMDb released a list of the top TV shows for 2020 so far. Now, typically they wait till the end of the year to release this kind of list, but apparently we've all done so much streaming while we've stayed at home during the pandemic that they felt it was worth doing an early look. So as far as top overall TV shows go this year, here's the list based on IMDb user ratings. You'll see that the Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls documentary The Last Dance tops the list, followed by some familiar names like Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, Westworld, and Better Call Saul. Now, you might notice some of those are pretty long-running series, so if you're curious about the top new TV shows, ones that debuted this year, well, IMDb has a list for that as well. And here it is. Again, The Last Dance tops the list since it debuted earlier this year on ESPN before coming to Netflix, but we also see new shows like Apple TV Plus's Defending Jacob and Star Trek Picard on CBS All Access. Of course, that all leads me to ask you cord cutters and streamers out there, do you see anything on those lists you don't particularly agree with? Maybe you found some new favorites this year and you feel more people should be aware of them. Well, you're more than welcome to share with the rest of us down below. In satellite TV news, rumors continue to circulate about AT&T's desire to sell off DirecTV. We've reported in the past how subscriber numbers have fallen for the satellite TV provider, and it appears AT&T is looking to offload the brand to private equity investors. To recap, the company bought DirecTV about five years ago for a cool $49 billion, but analysts seem skeptical that AT&T could recoup its investment. In fact, the Wall Street Journal said, current valuations for DirecTV hover below the $20 billion mark right now. And we've discussed potential deals and sales of DirecTV recently, including back in March when Dish's CEO, Charlie Ergen, called a merger of Dish and DirecTV inevitable. However, these newest rumors indicate Dish isn't part of the deal currently being discussed. In any case, AT&T has naturally not commented on a potential deal. But if an official announcement arrives, we'll be sure to let you know both here on our channel and over on our news website, cordcuttersnews.com. Okay, this next post is a sponsored post, so as always, I just want to reiterate that with all of our sponsored posts, all opinions remain our own. So as long as we're clear on that, let's talk about charge, shall we? So for Labor Day, Charge is hosting a marathon it's calling Putting on the Hits. And the running theme is that it's a collection of movies featuring assassins, mercenaries, and hitmen. In all, the marathon features five movies, including films like Elephant White, starring Jaimon Hansu and Kevin Bacon, Survivor with Mila Jovovich, and War Incorporated with John Cusack. That all starts at 1 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, and you can catch the marathon on Labor Day over at the Charge Network. And lastly, in hardware news, we keep getting more and more details about Google's unannounced but probably very, very real Android TV device. Over the past few months, we've seen rumored product renders, FCC listings, and other details, and this week brought a slate of possible retail listings for the HDMI dongle that could supplant the current Chromecast Ultra atop Google's streaming device lineup. Rumored listings from Home Depot, Walmart, and Target generally point to a price range of around $50 to $60 and a possible release date of September 30th. And we've seen reports of the device being codenamed Sabrina, but some of these retail listings also mention the name Abby, which could be the codename for the included remote control. In any case, we shouldn't have too much longer to wait if that September 30th release date rumor pans out. But what about that price point? How does $50 to $60 for an Android TV powered streaming device Sound to you. You know where to let us know. For reference, that's the same price range TiVo targeted with its intro pricing for the Stream 4K. That intro period has since been extended, and it'll be interesting to see how the arrival of Google's own take on Android TV devices affects rivals. So stay tuned. And that about wraps up the week that was here at Cord Cutting Today. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in. And like I said at the top, we'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. We have live Q&A sessions on Wednesday with our very own Jess, plus topical deep dives every Thursday. And of course, don't forget, we have a news website too. It's called cordcuttersnews.com. For now though, my name's Phil Palermo. 
Thanks again for tuning in, and I hope you all have a wonderful and safe Labor Day weekend. Happy streaming. Take care.